Okay, we are continuing to find out what happens after Aeneas shoots the seven deer. First, an oral reading of the lines. Hinc portum petit, et socios partitur in omnes. All right, we will take this first phrase up to the period. Let's see. Oh, we've got two clauses here. That tells us because we have a comma to separate the two clauses. Both clauses have a finite verb. Pretty easy here. Let's see. Hink, that's an adverb from here. Portum is, of course, accusative, and it is the direct object of petit. Notice petit is one of those nifty verbs with lots of meanings, and you need to think context. One definition of petit is to attack. I don't know if Aeneas is planning on attacking a port with his seven deer in tow. Another meaning of petit is to seek or head for. That might make a little more sense. So, hink portum pettit, we've got that clause. Now let's keep going. Et socios partitur in omnes. First thing to notice, we have a prepositional phrase, and Virgil likes to play around with our word order. Let's see. Socios, right here, is accusative, and it is the object of the preposition in. Normally, we would like to see that noun after the preposition, but Virgil has this thing going where he likes to put the object of the preposition before it. And of course, omnes modifies socios, so if you think, it could go in omnes socios. Partitur is a deponent verb, and the understood direct object of partitur would be the corpora, the bodies of the deer that Aeneas had slain in the previous passage. So let's try this. Et partitur corpora in omnes socios is probably easier word order for you. Okay, let's keep going. Wiener bonus, quae diende cadis honorarat acestis, litore trinacrio deiratque, Abiontibus heroes deweeded. Okay, let's see. First off, I see the word wina, which could be nominative or accusative. So we're going to hold that in our head. We don't know for sure if it's the direct object or the subject. But then we see the word bonus. Hey, bonus only has one possibility. Bonus is nominative singular. So that tells us, oh, wina must be a direct object. So, so far we know that somebody, bonus, nominative, masculine, singer, singular, is going to do something to the wines. So let's keep going and see if we can figure it out. Oh, then we have quai. Hey, quai is a relative clause marker. So that tells us we've got a relative clause coming here. I wonder where this relative clause ends. Quai diende cadiz onerarat acestis... Wow, this is keep going. Let's see. We've got a verb here. That might be the end of the relative clause, or it might go a little bit more. Litore tri nacrio deiteratque abi buntibus heros. Wow, that is a big relative clause. So we can use the commas to help us out. It starts with the quai. Then we have this comma here. So that tells us this is one big dependent clause. So let's take a peek at this dependent clause. Quai looks like it is modifying Wiener. So we don't know what the good somebody is doing to the wines yet. Before we get that information, we have to see how Virgil is going to describe the wines. Quae diende cadis onerarat acestis. acestis. Okay, acestis is a person's name. That is nominative. And quae, since it goes with Wiener, is neuter, which means this quae can be nominative or accusative, since we have a nominative here, we know that this quai must be accusative. So apparently, Acestes did this verb to which wine? To quai, to this stuff. Notice also that onerarat is sneaky, because what it really should be, it should be onerarat, but... Virgil left out that syllable there, but you knew that was coming, didn't you? What is that? Syncope? Yeah. And cadis is ablative plural, 
So we've got somebody good did something to this wine, which Acestes had done this too, and by means of or with or in these cadiz. Of course, I won't tell you what it means because that would spoil all the fun. Keep going. Litore trinacrio. Oh, look, boring noun adjective pair right there. You probably recognize that right away. Look, it's ablative of place where. Apparently, Acestes did, Acestes did all this on the Trinacrian shore. Dateratque. Oh, okay, datarat is a transitive verb. It probably takes a direct object, and the direct object of that is quai. So apparently, Acestes did two things. He did this verb here, and he did this verb here, both of which he did to the quai. Ad a untibus heroes. Oh, that's interesting because since datarot means to give, we are expecting a dative of indirect object here. Luckily, they gave it to us right there. Thanks, Virgil. So this is the dative indirect object saying who received the quai. And then we get this word heroes here. Oh, gotta love those Greek words. Heroes actually refers to Acestes, but we're all thinking that it has to do with the Trojans. Notice how Virgil uses that word order. We're thinking Trojans, but Heroes really modifies Acestes. Okay, we've tackled that relative clause, but we're still waiting to see the main clause. Weena bonus, oh, here's the verb, deweed it. So this here, let's make that a different underlining. This is your main clause, the good guy, some good person did this to the wine, and we can assume that the good person is Aeneas, our hero. He did this to the wine, which again is being described in this big ginormous relative clause, which you can handle because you are an amazing Latin genius. What else did Aeneas do? Et dictis my rentia pectora mulcet. Oh, how sad is that? Okay, my rentia pectora, noun adjective pair, my rentia is modifying pectora. Dictis is another neowop. Gotta love those neowops. And mulket. When's the last time we saw mulket? I have a feeling it was Aeolus who had the power. We'll have to look at that, but I'm pretty sure we've seen that word before. Anyways, Aeneas is still the subject of um, mulket, just like he was with Dewey. So that is the end of this passage.